it going? Brian O'Donnell here. Welcome back to another video. So if you're active on Instagram the last few days, you may have seen my post I put up here of a girl I met up with called Daniela. She was awesome, great crack in the shoot, but we got her putting powder in her hair and doing a big powder flick with her hair. We got this really cool photo. It looks so like dreamlike. The colors are really awesome. It looks good at like any angle, any crop. You can go full body and it still looks quite cool. So I thought I'd talk to you about powder paint photography. I got the idea for this shoot inspired by Joshua Griffin and Izzy Dawson who do have some really cool powder shots together and I thought that you know I'd give you the camera settings, what lenses to use, all the little tips and tricks to do with powder, how to throw it, you know how to, how to sprinkle it out. There's basically a lot of things you need to take into consideration but then once you have a plan in mind of what you need to do on the shoot it's a really easy shoot to do and the results are always gonna be cool. So let's start out by talking what kind of paint you need for a photo shoot just like this. So you basically just want paint powder. You can order it on Amazon. I got mine for 11 quid. I got five bags of it. I just ordered 10 bags just in case, but it turns out that these mini bags actually hold a lot of paint. They look small, but they, I don't know, it somehow spreads out really well. And when you look at these multicolored paints, you're gonna to have to put them side by side and decide which colors look good. For this photo, I decided that blue and pink were gonna look really cool together. And basically, you want to use two colors that contrast each other really well or just really suit each other well. So there's like a color circle you can look at. And basically on this color circle, how this works is that opposite colors work really well together. When they're put side by side, they're very aesthetic. And you know, people like looking at them. They're the stereotypical advertisement colors and everything like that. And the second thing you need to consider while doing paint photography is your location. You can't just be chucking around paint powder all over the random streets in town or you know private property or something like that because you're going to leave a massive mess and you do have to clean it up afterwards. So make sure you're in like a remote location or a place where it can easily be washed away or you can easily clean it. Just make sure it's a place where people aren't going to come up to you because if people see you throwing paint all around the place and making a big mess, they're going to complain, you're going to get kicked out and then you're going to have to find a new location. Meanwhile, your model's then covered in paint, just getting all, yeah, you know, it's not going to go down that well of a shoot. So tip number three is composition. Composition is basically your framing of the shot, what you're going to look at. For this to work, you need to be able to see the particles of paint powder in the air. Now, if you have, if you take a picture in front of a really white light, like I've got a white light coming from the side here, if I took a picture and threw some particles up in the air in front of it, with the white light behind, you wouldn't see any of the particles, they'd be blown out by the light. But if I took a picture with the black background behind me, which I don't know why I pointed here because this is not black behind me, but if I had a black background and then I threw up particles, you'd be able to see all the details of those particles. So how you want to compose this shot is have a really dark background behind your subject, quite a bit behind, and then have them in the light. Either have them standing in the sun or a shaded area, but just make sure in behind is dark, because if it's not dark behind, I have a few photos I took in the shoot here where I took them in the light with a bright background and it's just blown out. You can't see any particles, impossible to edit. It doesn't look great. So make sure black background or dark background is in the background. Dark background is in the background. Just make sure that, make sure you're taking a picture of your model, she's in the light, it's really dark behind so you can see all the particles. Tip number four is what lens do you want to use for a shoot like this? Now, I would always recommend for a shoot like this where you have time to compose yourself and set up is use a prime lens with a wide aperture. I personally use my 85 millimeter f1.8. I'll get it out now. I actually didn't get it too long ago. I haven't done a POV shoot with it, but if you want me to do one, leave it below. I'll probably just do one anyway, even if no one comments they want one. But yeah, it's a Sony like local lens, so the autofocus and everything is really fast. And it has an aperture of f1.8, which means the lens opens really wide and lets loads of light in. And the wider your lens can open, the more blur there's gonna be between your subjects and the background. So if you have a lens like this, open your aperture up as wide as you can, have your shutter speed at one over 4,000, or as fast as your camera can go. The fastest my camera does is one over 4,000. Some cameras do one over 8,000. Just go as fast as you can, because the faster your shutter speed, the more you'll catch those particles in focus. I have my ISO set down to 100, but again, just adjust it to your scene. But generally, these are your three settings on the screen here. Aperture, f1.8, shutter speed, one over 4,000, and then ISO of 100, and you're ready to go with your settings. So we're almost at the end here. Tip number five is find a model who is ready to be covered in loads of paint. Thank God I met up with Daniela, who was really up for getting, you know, just doing a fun shoot and being up for things, but a lot of other models would be like, you know, I don't really want to be covered in things, or your friends, or whatever like that. Just make sure someone's up for it, because you know, nothing worse than turning up at the shoot, them expecting, you know, a normal photo shoot and then you're like here chuck this paint on you and then they're like no nah, and then you have to go home find another one waste of a day you know so find someone who really wants to be covered in paint but yeah all together i had a really fun shoot probably one of the best ones i've done in a while it's just 
nice to do something different, nice to get out and, I don't know, meet new people, have a fun shoot. So I really recommend trying it out. It's really simple to do. There's loads of inspiration online. You can look at some of my ideas. You can check out Joshua's page again, Izzy's page. Loads of other people have tried it. So yeah, give it a whack. Hope to see your posts. If you do, tag me in them. And leave a comment below if you're, if you're gonna try it or you're into it or you enjoy the shoot or yeah, just leave a comment and press subscribe because that'd be really nice. So I'm just gonna leave it here. I'm gonna put two videos on the screen here. You can tap on if you want to watch some more videos and I'll put a subscribe here because then you can tap subscribe. So I'll just sit here and wait for the video to end. See you soon.